folks. My name is Dave Speak, and I teach in the Political Science Department. I'm also this year the chair of the Academic Senate. I don't know how to do that. Oh, I can tell the difference there. OK. Last year at fall con convocation, I mentioned the three guys who walked into the bar, the past, the present, and the future. And I said, this was a tense moment. It would be remarkably lame for me to try to wring any humor out of that joke a second time, since it didn't really work the first time, so I'm not going to do that. But I'll get straight to the point. And that is the observation that you don't have to be a Zen master to know that there's always tension when you gather the past, the present, and the future in one hand. Yet that's what we do today and this week, this fall. That's what we do every beginning. Today we're marking the end of summer, the beginning of an academic year. And for many folks in this auditorium and for many students beyond its walls, the beginning of their time at Cal Poly Pomona, and that's a pretty wonderful thing. Futures full of promise. We're starting our second 75 years. On the other hand, immediately following this, convoca this convocation in this room, we'll be celebrating 3,850 collective years of service to this campus, and that's a remarkable past. But rather than look to the past or gaze toward the future, I want to sing the virtues of being present in the moment today. Today, don't cling futilely to the way we've always done things. But likewise, today, don't hold your breath anticipating changes on the horizon. Live this day. Teach today. Answer that thousandth question about financial aid forms or Bronco Direct or the four-year pledge. Do that today. Tend that planting. Drive that shuttle. Make those copies. Do any of the 10,000 tasks that we all do to give life to this academic community. Do that today, because today is the only day you can ever do that. We have hope, but no promise for tomorrow. Do today everything you can do to contribute to the life of this academic community, because friends, this is a sacred responsibility to the people of California and to the children of our children's children. A really small fraction of workers in the modern economy get to participate in an enterprise as noble as the one we're part of here. Henry David Thoreau memorably wrote, I went to the woods because I wished to live deliberately, to front only the essential facts of life and see if I could not learn what it had to teach and not when I came to die, discovered that I had not lived. I did not wish to live what was not life. Living is so dear. Nor did I wish to practice resignation unless it was quite necessary. I wanted to live deep and suck all the marrow out of life, to live so sturdily and Spartan-like as to put to rout all that was not life. Cut a broad swath and shave close to drive life into a corner and reduce it to its lowest terms. The simplest 
and most profound celebration of life is to be aware of living it. Do that and the rest will fall into place. It didn't take a health scare to make Mike Ortiz a practitioner of living this day in his professional life. His attention to the present is what has guided an academic career of notable successes. It's an honor to be able to introduce him this morning on this day in the life of this wonderful community of learners. President Ortiz, welcome to this stage this morning. How in the world do you follow that? Good morning, everyone. Again, thank you, David, for the introduction. It was amazing. I'm glad and happy to see all of you here today as we begin a new academic year. First, I want to thank everyone at Kellogg West and the Farm Store for providing our breakfast, the Bronco Student Center, Media Vision, Public Affairs, and the President's Office for making it possible for making it possible for us to come together and kick off our 76th year, or as I like to say, our diamond year plus one. There's another individual who deserves recognition. She has been a tireless advocate, supporter, and cheerleader of our students and this university. She served in the university library, on the board of parents, partners in education, at the Veterans Resource Center, and is currently leading the All Steinway School Initiative. Please join me in recognizing my and your first lady, Betty Fay. People have asked me what I'm planning to do as I look to retirement. Since teaching my first university class at Appalachian State University over 40 years ago, I don't think I can just walk away. I'm sure that I will continue to be involved at some level, and of course, Betty Fay and I are looking forward to spending our time with our grandsons, that's Carter and Riley. Carter is not quite three and loves cars, trucks, and dinosaurs. Riley is one and walking. He's especially skilled at climbing and opening drawers and then climbing into those drawers. <laughs> I know the boys will keep us plenty busy in retirement. For all of you who have children or grandchildren, I'm sure you can imagine the upcoming adventures. Serving this institution has been one of the greatest experiences of my life. I have enjoyed getting to know each of you, not just what you do, but who you are. And you have responded in kind to me and Betty. I cannot adequately put into words what that has meant to us. When I arrived in 2003 for my first convocation, I received a warm welcome. It was tremendous. It's a, a moment I will never forget. I am privileged to introduce a distinguished guest today. She is currently the Provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs at CSU Bakersfield, and in a few months, you'll know her as President of Cal Poly Pomona. Please join me in welcoming Soraya Coley. One of the opportunities to meet Dr. Coley will take place this afternoon. She will be joining Betty and me at today's reception at the Manor House from 4 to 6 p.m. I encourage all of you to attend, introduce yourself, and welcome her to the Cal Poly Pomona community. We have much to celebrate today. 
Six years ago, we embarked on our first comprehensive campaign with a goal of raising $150 million. <clears throat> it was modeled after Harvard's first campaign, which was conducted during the Great Depression. And their endowment is now over $32 billion. I think we're equally as ambitious and audacious to launch our first fundraising campaign in one of the worst recessions in our nation's history. But our mission was clear and our goal was true. A Cal Poly Pomona education transforms lives. I want to take you back to September 2010 when we publicly announced the campaign for Cal Poly Pomona. When I think of Cal Poly Pomona, I think of a vibrant, diverse, polytechnic university. A university that celebrates its history and transforms lives. It's a place where the professors bring their experiences to the classroom. Where education keeps pace with a fast-changing world. An education that's within everyone's reach. When I think of Cal Poly Pomona, I think of our hands-on approach to learning. Our students know how to apply ideas in the real world. I know our graduates are ready to make a difference. The learn by doing philosophy is definitely what sets Cal Poly Pomona apart from other universities. The process of learning by doing is a process that is, uh, by definition, one that has surprises in it. That things don't go always according to plan. And that is actually beneficial. It's, it's a it's a good thing. We don't limit uh, what we do for our students to just being in the classroom. Learn by doing really makes the textbooks come to life. And it's not always about getting the right answer, it's about the process of getting the right answer. It teaches you to think quickly, to adapt, uh, to, to make the most out of a mistake, and sometimes getting to the end goal in a much more satisfying and organic way. We want to encourage their creativity and their curiosity as to how things work so that when they go out into industry, they're going to be problem solvers. Learn by doing is possible because our faculty are both teachers and scholars. Teacher scholar is an individual who is first focused on teaching, but again, realizes the importance of scholarship in order to bring the enhancement and the depth to that teaching. When I think of Cal Poly Pomona, I think of the experience that the professors bring to the classes. Bringing those experiences back to the classroom, it makes it more relevant to the students. Partnering with the industry, taking their input in our curriculum, uh, offering internships to our students in the industry, truly keeps us at the forefront. We know what industry expects of our students and how to best prepare our students so that they will have a job waiting for them when they graduate. There are new technologies, new developments that our students need to know before they graduate so that they can actually meet the demands of the industry. My education at Cal Poly and that opportunity of being a paraprofessional and what I learned spending so much time in the field with professional auditors put me leaps and bounds ahead of the competition even when I graduated. We have an incredibly supportive campus community and within our classrooms we practice the concept of a learning community where everyone is a part of a learning environment. We're all growing together. We have an obligation to bring our knowledge from the classroom to the community to address pressing environmental and social problems. I wanted uh, a place where I could actually exercise my interest in social uh, responsibility. When I think of social responsibility, I think of kids having access to education through a higher opportunity. I feel there's a sense of a hope, if you will, that the working class, um, their children, 
and has a future and they're being taken care of by a fine institution. Cal Poly Fumano offers an affordable education, a very affordable education for a lot of families that could not afford higher education at all and uh, many of these are students that are the first generation to go to college. Everyone can come here and get a quality education and like myself be set with a career upon graduation if you work hard. Cal Poly Mona actually has a legacy, has a history, uh, and, a, and it's a legacy of giving, I might say, that started off with the initial grant of the uh, Voorhees property in 1938, and then W.K. Kellogg gifted the property we're sitting on right now today, the Kellogg Arabian Horse Ranch, to the state of California for use in 1949. Cal Poly is just very special. Uh, you know, it's a tradition maybe among American philanthropists to start great universities. Uh, and it turned out that Cal Poly Pomona was the university that Mr. Kellogg helped start. I know he would be very pleased, um, you know, thrilled to see what Cal Poly is doing today. The next generation is going to be building the future of America and Cal Poly Pomona is an institution that offers the educational background that are so fundamental to building the future. Cal Poly Pomona is an extraordinary success story. When I think about tomorrow, when I think about the future, the possibilities are limitless. Right now we're a superb university, but all dynamic universities have support from the outside. With more sponsorship, we can take things to the next level and build upon the excellence that we have here. The most powerful way to ensure sustained excellence is through endowment. endowment goes on forever. Endowment builds on itself. It takes away from the highs and lows of the economy. We are ensuring the future. The ability to give someone a scholarship is, is almost like they're seeing their potential uh, without actually getting to meet them. So I, I appreciate them taking that risk on me and uh, I hope that I can fulfill that, that promise to them. I remember when I was a student in my junior year, I received a grant. Uh, at that time it was a $600 grant and to me it could have been a million dollars. Donors provide opportunity. They are creating waves that will wear away at today and in the process will build tomorrow. Your commitment to this campaign will transform lives by pushing the boundaries of knowledge for all of our students many of whom would have never had the chance at a college education. Our educational model works, but it comes at a price. Your support will provide scholarships for promising students, expand research, and empower us to keep pace with rapidly changing industries. We produce the graduates that will lead California and improve our communities, the type of citizens you want to see as your next door neighbor. This is our classroom. Our edge. Our community. This is our moment. Our opportunity. This is Cal Poly Pomona. It's as, tr it's as true now as it was then, except everybody on the film looked younger than I do. <laughs> Over the years, we connected with thousands of people who shared our vision. I want to let you know a secret. We didn't raise $150 million. We exceeded it. Thanks to our generous supporters, including many of you here today, we raised over $160 million. Please direct your attention to the next scene. Again, the next video will highlight campaign success. What does it take to build the future? We set out to raise $150 million. We got off to a great start thanks to a longtime friend. 
then a wonderful thing happened. People gave. Their generosity has touched the entire campus. This campaign wouldn't have been possible without alumni and friends. There are simply too many individuals to mention here today. Our invaluable partners and leaders have given their name, their time, their talent, and their treasure. They are the finest ambassadors any university could have. Faculty and staff also played a significant role. It's especially heartening to receive your donations because you are on the front lines every day, teaching, advising, serving our students. Your support is tangible and is an intangible endorsement that Cal Poly Pomona is a worthy investment. More important, you've demonstrated your confidence in the university, our students, and our future. Last year's faculty and staff campaign was a great success and we hope to build on that success this year. In October, our annual fund will be sending information about this year's faculty staff campaign. Thank you for participating in the campaign and for your support of this university. I truly mean this. We did it! When we embarked on the campaign, we laid out four goals. To strengthen our ability to provide learn-by-doing opportunities, to prepare students for the changing demands of the workplace, to increase research and scholarship opportunities, and finally, to ensure that a quality college education remains within the reach for underrepresented communities. Already you can see the impacts on campus. The most visible evidence are the new buildings, upgraded labs, new equipment that enrich our students' daily learning experiences. The College of Business Administration has classrooms, meeting rooms, and auditoriums that promote discussion and collaboration. Soon, the Collins College of Hospitality Management will have a new building entirely funded by private donations, and it will greatly enhance their undergraduate and graduate programs. And the W.K. Kellogg Arabian Horse Library has a beautiful new home that is especially fitting of its storied legacy. The Kellogg Distinguished Public Lecture Series has brought prominent speakers from a variety of fields, such as Nobel Prize winner Rigoberto Mencho Tum, who spoke about diversity, racism, and social justice. We also heard from Professor Sir Ian Wilmot, who led a team that produced Dolly the Sheep, the first mammal cloned from an adult stem cell. Other speakers included Annie Leonard, a leader for sustainability awareness, and actress Patricia Arquette, who spoke on environmental efforts in Haiti. One of the most important campaign successes was raising $11 million for scholarships giving more students the opportunity to realize their dream of earning a college degree. A less visible outcome, but no less important, is the addition of $73 million to our endowment, bringing our endowment total to $90 million. This fund will generate $4.3 million this year, and that money will be directly 
used to support our students, the university, through scholarships. Student support services, co-curricular opportunities, new programs, and more. Endowment ensures that the gifts of today will continue to give in the years to come, and it allows the university to thrive even in tough times. We have a ways to go before we catch Harvard, but we're on our way. Everyone on campus had a role in this campaign, and I especially want to recognize Acting Vice President Michelle Stoddard and the entire team in university advancement, as well as the college deans for working with donors, gathering support, and sharing Cal Poly Pomona's story. Last year, we celebrated our 75th anniversary. It was a spectacular time to be a Bronco. What made it special were all the people who came together to reflect on their experiences, celebrate the achievements of our community, and acknowledge the contributions of those who have come before us. I felt tremendous pride from our entire campus, especially during homecoming weekend when thousands of alumni, students, faculty, staff, and their families came to campus. You could see the pride at the Athletics Hall of Fame and the Engineering Hall of Fame events. You could feel the legacy and sense of belonging at the College of Agriculture reunion. The theater department's Special K performance highlighted our rich history, and the fireworks finale perfectly capped off a year of celebrations and reunions. Our most recent ranking in U.S. News and World Report is another reason to be proud of the direction we're heading. The 2015 College Report puts Cal Poly Pomona at number four among public universities in the West. In addition, the College of Engineering In addition, the College of Engineering's undergraduate program is nationally ranked at number 23 among master's level institutions. Our learn by doing approach and quality education make us one of the top universities in the region. When students come to Cal Poly Pomona, they know they will have the opportunity to work with top-notch faculty and staff who care about their success they know that they'll receive a well-rounded education and a full college experience. Another area that we will continue to be a model is in environmental sustainability. When we surveyed the campus several years ago, we found that the environment is a key topic in a large majority of our programs. As a university, we have the talent, skills, and resources to explore innovative ideas to teach our students to be global citizens and to help advance sustainable practices in our communities. ASI has created a new Green Initiative Fund with $100,000 to support student organizations that want to implement sustainable projects, promote awareness in the next year. And under the direction of Dr. Kyle Brown, our campus will monitor our greenhouse gas emissions and make recommendations. In addition, we will look into broader sustainability topics such as transportation and vehicle emissions, water consumption, food production, waste and recycling, and community service. I want to highlight a few more successes from the past year. Alumna and former U.S. Secretary of Labor, Hilda Solis joined the College of Letters, Arts, and Social Sciences as a scholar in residence, leading conferences and interacting with students and faculty. Hilda has been a wonderful addition to our campus. Her interaction with students show how deeply she cares about their success. Her presence is an inspiration to all of us. Last January, our hardworking Rose Float team brought home the Innovation Award for Bedtime Buccaneers. 
They developed an imaginative way to animate some of the flowers to st simulate waves. I'm looking forward to what they have in store for us this year. The Model United Nations team brought home an outstanding delegation award, the highest honor given at its national conference. It was the best performance by Cal Poly Pomona since 2008. The theater department has been recognized by the Kennedy Center American College Theater Festival for its production of War of the Worlds. In February, our students performed a scene at the Kennedy Center's regional event in Los Angeles. What an honor for our theater students to perform at the festival. Professor John Self became the first faculty member from the Collins College of Hospitality Management to be a Fulbright Scholar. He has been teaching in Helsinki since August and will return at the end of the year. The College of Engineering offered the university's first MOOC, or Massive Open Online Course. Professor Paul Nissenson taught students around the world the essentials of computer program. Speaking of engineering, we recently joined the Advanced Manufacturing Partnerships of Southern California Consortium to help boost the aerospace and defense industries. As a partner, Cal Poly Pomona will receive student support and federally funded research opportunities. Partnerships are an ongoing throughout the university to give our students real world ex experiences and to give our faculty opportunities to share their expertise. The Apparel Merchandising and Management Department is now part of an international manufacturing alliance. This group is pioneering innovative and environmentally friendly techniques in making clothes. That's happening right next door in Rancho Cucamonga. Also in agriculture, Professor Sheldon Marinda and a research team have secured a half a million dollar grant. They are studying whether algae can be used to clean polluted water on dairy farms and be fed safely to livestock. Service learning is also an part of our academic program. During our 75th anniversary, the Center for Community Engagement challenged us to reach 75 acts of kindness. I'm proud to say that we did more than double our goal. We documented over 150 service learning and volunteer acts. One example from the, is from Liberal Studies. Students organized and led a leadership conference for Santana High School to instill the importance of civic engagement. In the College of Science, a new program called CalBridge will help increase the number of CSU students completing their bachelor's degree and successfully entering PhD program to study astronomy and related fields. The ever popular poly trolley food truck received two prestigious national awards in the past year. One is from the National Association of College and University Food Services. The food truck also received an Innovative Use of Technology Award from the National Association of College Auxiliary Services. The awards honor the Poly Trolley's excellence in its menu, technology, sustainability, facility design, and marketing. This year's graduating class of 2015 is a special one because of a statewide milestone. The California State University is celebrating three million graduates next spring. The most alumni from any public institution in the country. Every CSU campus will be marking this occasion in its own way. Our commitment committee, or commencement committee, and they're also committed, and alumni association are developing special plans to honor the class of three million. I also want to highlight a few upcoming events if you have some time this quarter. The Kellogg Art Gallery is hosting Ink and Clay 40 with pieces by artists from around the country. Also, the new Huntley Art Gallery in the University Library is showcasing woodwork from California sculptor Fred Rose. Construction on the brick is complete. Students will get a first look. <laughs> 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 
Students will get a first look at the state-of-the-art facility this week. The facility covers 165,000 square feet over three floors. It features several fitness studios, three gym courts, an indoor track, fitness equipment, an outdoor swimming pool, and a 50-foot climbing wall. Anybody want to try that stuff? No, okay. <laughs> the official grand opening is October 8th, and I hope everyone can attend and watch Campus Life take off. This Saturday, show your Bronco pride and celebrate with us at Cal Poly Pomona Day at the LA County Fair. Betty and I will be participating in the Cal Poly Pomona Parade along with students, alumni, family, and friends. Be sure to stop by the Wilderness Ridge area where you'll see a prototype of a log cabin for public parks de designed by our architecture students. Best of all, our students, staff, and faculty will receive free admission when you show your Bronco ID and a flyer. Go to Polycentric to download and print the flyer. Our student athletes continue to excel on the field and in the classroom. I'm proud to say that 45 student athletes were named to the 2013-14 All Academic Team. All 10 teams were represented on the list, and it's the seventh year in a row that we've had more than 40 Broncos receive this honor. As we look forward to the next 75 years, it's fitting that intercollegiate athletics is building its future. I'm excited to unveil a new look for Bronco athletics. It is a bold, modern, and magnificent. The new athletic logo, I'll get it right. <laughs> there. The new athletic logo will help represent all Broncos of the past, present, and future. You'll soon see the new logo on the basketball court of Kellogg Gym, on athletic uniforms, and on t-shirts in the Bronco bookstore. I want to recognize everyone in intercollegiate athletics for their work on this initiative. Every year, we come together for competition to celebrate and recognize the efforts of our campus community. At the same time, we feel the loss of friends and colleagues who have passed away. Let us take a few moments to remember those who are not here with us today. Roger Blaine Humes, staff member in the College of Engineering. Don Morris, faculty member in the Kinesiology and Health Promotion Department. Jean Kellogg, University Benefactor and Namesake of the W. Keith and Janet Kellogg University Art Gallery and Kellogg Honors College. We are a campus that values student engagement and contributions, and we have a track record of top-notch student leaders. I'm proud to introduce the two individuals who will lead our student body this year. Please join me in welcoming ASI President James Cox and Vice President Louis Harfush. It is also my pleasure to introduce newly appointed members of the university's leadership team. Let me welcome a couple of deans who have recently begun their appointments. Leading the College College of Hospitality Management, please welcome Dr. Leah Dobson. Where's Leah? <laughs> the
This is a homecoming for Leah, who was a member of the Collins faculty for many years. Her most recent appointment was the chair of the Hospitality and Tourism Management Department at the University of North Texas. Leading the College of Agriculture, please welcome Dr. Mary Holzclaus. Who, be, who comes by way of University of Connecticut, and Mary was UConn's first Vice President for Economic Development and has extensive experience in creating public and private partnerships. I want to thank Dr. Ed Merritt and the Collins College for stepping in during this transition, as well as Dr. Les Young for his many years of service and leadership in agriculture. We have three new faces among our vice presidents, although you probably know them very well by now. In January, Michelle Stoddard became the acting vice president for university advancement. Her leadership has been instrumental in completing our successful comprehensive campaign. Also at the beginning of 2014, we welcome Dr. Stephen Garcia as our new vice president for administrative affairs. Steve has served at the Claremont Graduate University and Cal State LA, and we welcome his years of leadership and experience and insight. And finally, please recognize Dr. Rebe Rebecca Gutierrez Keaton, and she became the Acting Vice President for Student Affairs. Rebecca has been a leader on campus for 25 years. Her enthusiasm and service for students is evident in everything she does. I'm looking forward to beginning a new year with them joining us. Would you please stand and be recognized? Today we began the academic day with 45 new tenure track and 164 new staff. In keeping with tradition, all of our new faculty and staff are wearing a name tag and a green ribbon. This is a great way to identify them and personally welcome them to our campus. Please stand and be recognized. One of the best parts of convocation is celebrating the great work and achievements of our faculty. The Provost Awards for Excellence recognizes outstanding faculty in the areas of teaching, service, and scholarly and creative activities. Please direct your attention to the screen to learn about this year's distinguished group of individuals. Provost Awards for Excellence honor our faculty members' outstanding contributions to the university, their disciplines, and their students. These professors represent the very best of Cal Poly Pomona's teacher-scholar model. I would like to recognize our 2014 honorees. Professor Allison Baker for Excellence in Teaching, Professor Dan Hostetler for Excellence in Service, and Professor Angel Valdez for excellence in scholarly and creative activity. The English is a very applicable sounds trite, but it, but it's it helps you develop a set of skills that are applicable in a lot of different contexts and my students are constantly reminding me how important that is to them. Watching her in a classroom is like watching a a very good orchestra conductor. She is able to to manage all of various personalities and learning styles in a very, very effective way. She's very, very good at what she does. 
Dr. Baker brings an unparalleled enthusiasm um, to her classroom. Uh, to have somebody or know somebody who has that kind of passion for what they're um, teaching or interested in is really inspiring and it makes you think that you can do whatever you want to be able to do. She also cares about her students. She really wants them to learn and so she does everything she needs to do and can do to engage the students, to make the subject that's so far removed relevant, to make them appreciate and give them a glimpse into a world that's gone. What I hope my students come to see is that the stories that they learn and love and live, these are relevant because we still have the same problems that people had a thousand years ago, two thousand years ago, four thousand years ago. Some of the stuff I teach is very old. We still are most concerned about living and dying and falling in love and raising our kids and doing the right thing and being good people and being productive. When we're reading um, texts like Beowulf, um, Dr. Baker has this really great way of relating some of the people and what they're doing with the people in pop culture or um, in the current news. And to know that the people in these texts are basically the same and are doing the same things that they, we are today, it's a really interesting way to look at literature. So she also cares about her students. She really wants them to learn and so she does everything she needs to make them appreciate and give them a glimpse into a world that's gone. I began and end with students and the fact that students wrote letters for me to get an award means that I must be doing something right and that is enough to keep me going for another 20 years at least. Being involved hands-on, learn by doing, I think that's one of the best ways you can teach somebody is uh, not only to talk about it, but to actually have them do it. Uh, people can utilize the, the land, the nursery, the, the agriscapes, the, the farm store, things like that. Those are, those are all opportunities. What I learned from Dan is long-term vision takes time and patience. And it doesn't happen overnight, but you have to be persistent and consistent in, in uh, striving towards your goal. And Dan is one of the best people I know that represents that challenge and he works very hard to make things succeed and if you look around that's why Agriscapes and the college is really doing as well as it is today because of what his efforts were. Students are number one um, that's why we're here there are customers um, helping them in any way shape form fashion and oftentimes that's not Monday through Friday 8 to 5 that's you know that's Saturday from 10 to 12 Dan's a role model, I think, for both his faculty and for the, for the students. The students saw a guy who worked really hard. Most of his students, okay, worked full-time jobs. Dan really recognized this and made his total effort to be sure that those kids would stay in school and graduate with their diploma at the end. Thanks to him, I was able to get out of college debt-free. Um, I mean, I was working full-time, going to school full-time. But all those scholarships that I got awarded, I probably accumulated somewhere between 15,000. And it was all thanks to him pushing me to go forward for them and showing me what uh, opportunities were out there. I, I keep going back to the students. I, I love seeing students be successful at the end. That's, that, that's where I get the most satisfaction. Um, uh, just, it, it, you know, it, it's a little note that I get back from a student after they've been gone three years. You know, that, that's more rewarding to me than than anything else I've done and I, I see I see so many of them in, in such neat careers and they're going to be the leaders of this, this industry in the future. If you want to be a good teacher you have to create new knowledge and bring that knowledge into the classroom and at the same time to be a good scientist you'll be able you have to be able to teach. So I think the two elements are very important and they're two, two, two sides of the same coin. He's tremendously focused on advancing the careers of his mentees. So he's very conscious about making sure that their work gets published in a timely manner. Um, his students have the opportunity to travel internationally, to collect specimens, to access museum collections, and to work with um, on house colleagues. I encourage my students to be active uh, in obtaining their own research. So they apply to different funding sources, and my students have been very successful. And I think that Angel measures his own success by the success of those who he has mentored, and I think that in turn um, 
their contributions to the field will really be his most enduring legacy. There is no way that I would have been able to go to a PhD program straight out of my undergrad. Uh, this uh, experience in the master's program with Dr. Valdez has been completely invaluable. Angel has also named hundreds of species, and one of the kind of cool things about working in this field is a well-described species is a name that will last forever. It, it's the ultimate goal of science is to create new knowledge and, and, and distribute this knowledge among the community and you do that through publication. I think he was pretty much born to do this, <laughs> to, to be a researcher, a professor. That's resulted in uh, 150 plus publications. I really think that he embodies the goals of the CSU as a teaching and mentoring focused institution that also um, emphasizes excellence in scholarly work. It's a really, really hard balance to strike, and I think Anjo has been extremely successful at doing that. I don't know if all of the Provost uh, Award winners are here today, but I made Dan Hostetler sit up here so I could stand up. So if he could stand along with the other two, that would be great. I know you're probably wondering if you're going to get tenure in uh, uh, addresses to start the new year, but we're getting there. <laughs> I have a lot to say today. But I would also like to ask you to help me recognize Trevor Henderson and Esther Tanaka, as well as the teams in Media Vision and Public Affairs for putting these videos together. Celebrating the work of the Academy is at the core of this award. The Provost Awards for Excellence Symposium will be held in December, and it is an opportunity to hear from these outstanding faculty members as they give presentations on their disciplines and different approaches. Details about the event will be announced soon, and I hope you make the time to attend. When it comes to making an impact on students, advising plays a critical role. In the next year, we will strengthen advising by adding professionally staffed advising centers in every college. These full-time advisors will help ensure that students receive consistent support as they chart their academic path, make career plans, and navigate the university. With that said, let us meet our outstanding advisors for 2014. Michelle Rash, Animal and Veterinary Sciences, College of Agriculture. Hassan Hefsi, Accounting, College of Business Administration. S. Terry Gomez, Ethnic and Women's Studies, College of Education and Integrative Studies. Zachariah Aliazi J. Oglu, Electrical and Computer Engineering, College of Engineering. Crystal Yachin Lee, Art, College of Environmental Design. Mary U. D'Amico, Psychology and Sociology, College of Letters, Arts, and Social Sciences. Cynthia Anderson Sanchez, Biological Sciences, College of Science. Margie F. Jones, Collins College of Hospitality Management. David W. Craig, Career Center, Student Affairs. Brian Joseph E. Pengen, College of Science, Academic Affairs. Engineering Freshman Advising Program. Summer Bridge Academic Advising Seminar. Each year, select university faculty are confirmed by their colleagues to earn the right of tenure 
thus becoming lifetime members of the university family. The two, in 2014, 35 individuals received this honor, with some also earning promotion to professor or associate professor. Let's acknowledge them now. Congratulations to each of you. One of my favorite days of the year is Staff Appreciation Day. It's important to acknowledge the breadth and the quality of the work of our staff. We also hear about four individuals who have made significant contributions to the university and who often go out of their way to help students, their departments, and the campus. Please join me in honoring them. Carol Couchman, Foundation Dining Services. Carol Lee, Office of the Vice President for Student Affairs. Marissa Martinez, Office of the Provost. Adeline Yoshioka, Student Affairs Information and Technology Services. Each year at Fall Conference, we announce the recipient of the George P. Hart Award. This award recognizes faculty members who are regarded as role models and leaders on campus and in the community. Before I introduce the Hart Award recipient, I want to recognize and extend a warm welcome to President Emeritus Bob Suzuki and his wife, Agnes. They have served as mentors for today's recipient and President Suzuki has significantly shaped this university with this visionary leadership. This year's Hart Award recipient joined Cal Poly Pomona in 1998 and has served as Vice Chair of Psychology and the Sociology Department. She has participated in numerous boards, committees devoted to enhancing multicultural understanding. She is also the director of the Weglin Endowed Chair and a respected expert in Asian American identity and community. She also has served as president of the Association for Asian American Studies. Please recognize the 2014 Hart Award recipient, Dr. Mary Yu Danico. Thank you so much. Are you all holding up okay back there, standing up? Thank you, um, President Ortiz, President Emeritus Suzuki, and our incoming president, Coley, uh, Provost Danvor, Dean Hillis, esteemed colleagues, staff, student, and friends. I am truly humbled and thankful to be here in front of you today. I wanna send a special thanks to my student, Tam Shaparo, who is uh, now going to UCLA this week in her master's program, and Kendall Ota for nominating me for this award. This award is extra special because you too took the time to do this. 
I also really want to send a thanks to Johnny Owens, my former colleague and friend, Lori Rhodes, um, and one other person, oh, and Faye Wax, for supporting my nomination. I am really humbled to be in the company of so many who I have really looked up to since I came here 17 years ago. 17 years goes by very fast. Um, as a 1.5 generation Korean American who learned how to speak English, watching Audrey Hepburn, Julie, Hepper, uh, Julie Andrews, Jean Kelly, I am really surprised that I can actually stand in front of you today right now. As a child living in Korea at the age of five, I taught other Korean kids how to speak English. I just knew then that I loved to teach. When my dad brought us over to the United States, uh, just to, it was a dream come true for me. But sadly, when I immigrated, I realized that it was just a dream. I was actually treated as an outsider. I was told that my country didn't exist, that my food smelled funny, I had slanted eyes, and that I would really never amount to much because English is my second language. So, you know, when I think about the reality for me, um, it was really strange because my sister joined a Chinese gang. I was befriended by cholas in training who accepted my outsider status. And my parents got really worried, so they moved us to the burb. And so there, you know, obviously we did not fit the model minority stereotype. But it was really in high school when my high school teacher, Mr. C, who really modeled to me what it meant to be a teacher and what it meant to be someone who really believed in me more than I believed in myself. Unfortunately, when I went to college, all of that ended. I was once again a first-generation college student with immigrant parents who did not know how to navigate the college culture, and I was working full-time, and so once again, I was an outsider. It was not until I went to the University of Hawaii at Manoa where I really found my voice. See, I, when I look at the students before us, I see myself in them. I see students who mirror, in many ways, all of the things that I went through as well. So I knew then I really wanted to be in a profession where I wanted to help others, and that was really instrumental to me. I knew that if I modeled Mr. C's teacher model where you really show compassion and you reach out to students, it does make a difference. And it's proven for the past 17 years that it makes a difference. My anti-racist, anti-sexist, anti-homophobic, and anti-oppression work at Cal Poly has not only been respected, but really valued. I think it's really a challenge for many scholars who pursue social justice work to be in a climate where we are free to really speak, teach, and research is a true gift. And as many of us know that academic affairs and an academic standing, this is a huge threat currently. The polytechnic mission of Cal Poly Pomona may initially appear to be a disadvantage for those of us in the liberal arts, but it has turned out to be a natural partnership. We provide very the very foundation of critical thinking, cutting edge out of the box ideas, and innovation that is needed to help elevate our students. Liberal arts is the heart of a university experience. The university encouraged collaboration, and I've been very fortunate to work across discipline and across division, especially with those in the student services. I have been um, supported by my dean, Hillis, to really reach out the local and the global. And my efforts here have also been supported by other administrators and deans at the university. President Ortiz, since he's been here, has shared his personal biography with me and my students, and in turn has offered a candid glimpse of what is possible when you seize opportunities. I've benefited and learned a great deal from our leaders here on campus. I continue to grow and learn because Cal Pomona has afforded me mentors, and especially our President Emeritus Bob Suzuki and Agnes Suzuki, who mentored me when I started, who continue to mentor me, and really are my strongest advocates, and I thank them so very much. I really also want to thank my great friend, Johnny, and also Barbara Way, who is not here, who was our former dean of class. 
And finally, my former colleague and now Associate Dean, Lori Rhodes, really modeled for me what true collaborative leadership means. That when you work together, things can actually happen and you can transform a university. Finally, I thank my biggest supporter um, and biggest champion, Bryston, who is not here. He wanted to be here, but I told him don't come. Um, as a career of two mom, one a teenager and now a tween, um, raising compassionate, strong young women is a real big challenge. And I would not have been able to take on these leadership positions if not for the support of my partner. I am privileged to work in an awesome department in the psychology and sociology department with great faculty and staff, and more importantly, the best students a faculty member could ever ask for. I'm truly blessed to be in this profession that I call work, and I am humbled by this award. And thank you all who continue to support my growth and development. Thank you. I want to draw your attention to a serious subject that is being discussed on college campuses throughout the country and in the highest levels of our government. In January, President Obama established a White House task force to protect students from sexual abuse. It came with a mandate to strengthen federal enforcement efforts and to provide schools with additional tools. Cal Poly Pomona takes violence and sexual assault very seriously. In fact, our campus was lauded by the Department of Justice and the Department of Education this spring for effectively raising awareness about sexual violence and advocating for campus safety. In response to the task force recommendations and proposed regulations, all colleges and universities are closely evaluated or are closely being evaluated on their response to sexual violence. Cal Poly Pomona will devote more resources to this issue with the hiring of a Title IX director and a deputy director to handle investigations. Let us also begin a campus dialogue to increase awareness. We all have a role in keeping our campus safe, supporting our students, and supporting each other. More information about Title IX and violence prevention will be coming to you soon. Adding resources for the Title IX is one of the many goals of this year. There are a number of initiatives that I believe will greatly benefit students. For incoming students, the College of Engineering launched a new summer program called Engineering Your Future to help raise their transition to college. The program primarily served underrepresented and first-generation students. There were 120 new freshmen in the College of Engineering, and more than half were women. It was uh, sponsored by notable partners, including Boeing, Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman, Union Pacific, and Xerox. For current students, I mentioned earlier how we have are strengthening advising in every college. To further help students reach their goal of earning a degree, our campus will implement a pilot program called Learning in Communities, also known as the LINK. Students in the Learning and the LINK program will follow a cohort-themed approach in general education. In addition, these learning communities will engage with the campus and extend their academic knowledge by participating in co-curricular activities that are designed and arranged by faculty and student affairs staff. Planning for semester conversion continues to make progress with the goal to change over in fall 2018. During the summer, committees have taken a number of issues, including advising, curriculum conversion, enrollment, and technology. These discussions will continue throughout the year as the committees look at the best structure to guide students and to make the transition as seamless as possible. This afternoon, there will be several committee presentations about their progress and the curriculum structures in general education and degree programs. I know we are all thinking about these issues, and in particular, how to ensure a smooth transition. 
I hope you will take time to attend these very important workshops. There are a few high profile construction projects on the horizon, including a new parking structure near I Poly High School. The structure will provide 1,500 parking spaces and is scheduled to be completed by fall 2016. The new Student Services Building is on track for completion in fall of 2018. As a one-stop shop, the building will enhance our ability to serve students and make it easier for them to find the resources and the people that they need. I'm sure you'll be pleased to hear that we will not uh, intend to minimize parking spaces because our plans call for an underground parking garage. Innovation Village continues to grow and thrive as a business and organizations recognize the potential of partnering with Cal Poly Pomona. The CTTI building has two new tenants which will bring our occupancy to 95%. That's the highest on record. You may have heard that one of these new tenants is a brewery, Innovation Brew Works. <laughs> Innovation Brew Works will be a learn-by-doing brewery and laboratory for students and a cafe for the community. In addition, I'm pleased to announce that Innovation Village will soon enter Phase 5. We plan to, plan to sign leases and construct a three-story building with 123,000 square feet of office space. I also have an update on the Lanterman Development Center, which is less than a mile from our campus. The state has identified the center for closure in December, and we have been in discussion with the state regarding the transfer of the property to the university. A final decision has not been reached by the state, but preliminary indications are positive. Earlier this year, we asked our campus community, alumni, prospective students, and our surrounding neighbors about their perception of Cal Poly Pomona. The results confirm my long-held beliefs about this campus. Cal Poly Pomona is not just a good university, we are an outstanding university and a destination campus for future students. Our learn by doing approach, quality education, and affordable tuition fees make us one of the most desirable universities in the region. And certainly we have one of the best reputations among CSU campuses. Prospective students know that when they come to Cal Poly Pomona, they have the opportunity to work closely with dedicated faculty members, solve real world problems, and make a difference. Our faculty do more than teach from a book or lecture from a classroom. They engage the challenge and challenge our students to think critically and to think creatively. At the same time, they provide invaluable mentoring and share their insights with the students. When you put it all together, these one-of-a-kind experiences give our students an edge. Employers recognize that our graduates are ready to make a difference in day one. During our 75th anniversary, I often said that there is no better time to be a Bronco. That pride carries on today. I'm excited to share a new project that will showcase our Cal Poly Pomona community and will feature our outstanding faculty our exceptional students. Of course, our distinguished alumni will also be in the forefront of this project. We are Cal Poly Pomona. We are an outstanding university. This new website, which launches today, will celebrate the accomplishments of our entire campus community. Personally, I like to call this our bragging page. You can't read through the stories of our faculty and staff or watch videos of inspiring students and not be proud of our community. Alumni will have additional opportunity to share how they are making a difference in the world. We are literally putting Cal Poly Pomona on the digital map. This academic year, we will transition to a new internet address. We are moving from CSU Pomona EDU and adopting CPPEDU. <laughs> the Domain Change is a major university initiative implemented by the IT division, and the transition will touch every part of our campus. There are multiple reasons for a domain change, and I will share a couple of them. 
The majority of our campus community and friends call us Cal Poly Pomona, though some of you more uh, formal folks may still call our, the official title California State Polytechnic University Pomona. Over the years, people have wondered why our web address is CSU Pomona, when no one calls us by that name. We're in the age of smartphones, tablets, and Google Glass, so there are many reasons to update and shorten our web address. There's another side benefit. My thumbs will get a little rest when I'm using my iPhone. <clears throat> As I said, the domain is a complex project for the IT division. Another area that is touched by this transition is our email. Over the next few months, faculty and staff will be moving to a new email system called Office 365. It's a system that our students currently use, and yes, you can still use Outlook for email, calendars, and contacts. Let me share a few benefits of Office 365 that I hope you will appreciate. One terabyte of Microsoft cloud storage for faculty, staff, and students. If you use Dropbox, yeah. you can tell who the tech junkies are, right? <laughs> if you use Dropbox, this is Microsoft's version of it. Just imagine the sharing and collaborating you can do with OneDrive for business. We'll be getting Microsoft Office online and mobile apps. You'll be able to edit Word, Excel, and PowerPoint documents from a web browser. Plus, you'll be able to use Office on your iPad, iPhone, Android phone, and Windows phone. Best of all, everyone will receive 50 gigabytes of cloud email storage. Hopefully that means I can identify with that one since I just went over my capacity this weekend. <clears throat> Hopefully that means that most of us won't get notifications about our mailbox filling up. Some of you may be wondering, what about our business cards and letterhead? We have developed a new suite of materials that this cla is classic and collegiate and is also instantly recognizable as Cal Poly Pomona. The new materials carry the cpp.edu uh, e domain, but more important, they reflect the spirit of our brand. Our Cal Poly Pomona identity is an integral asset, and that is something that we should embrace. After my message today, we will segue into the service award ceremony, and I hope that once you get your uh, a little rest, you will stay and celebrate the commitment to our faculty and staff. This afternoon, I look forward to seeing all of you at the reception at the Manor House. This is my final convocation message, and I feel as energized today as I did when I arrived 11 years ago. I am proud to serve as your president and honored to work alongside the best faculty and staff in higher education. Thank you for your steadfast commitment to our students and to this great university. Thank you for allowing Betty Fay and me to call. Thank you. Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> but thank you for allowing Betty Fay and I to call this beautiful campus our home. Remember everything that we have accomplished over the years and think of all that we can still achieve in our final months together. Always remember who we are and what we can do together. This is an exceptional university. We provide students with a transformational experience. We are Cal Poly Pomona.